Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our session today, a topic of leading your team to AI excellence. We're looking forward to an engaging conversation where you'll hear a couple of different perspectives on the topic of growing and managing a data science function. With Glenn Hoffman, Chief Analytics Officer of New York Life, and Siva Balu, VP and CIO of YMCA. My name is John Brunn. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer at Domino Data Lab. Without further ado, I'm very excited to introduce Glenn and Siva. Thank you both for joining us today. Starting with Glenn, can each of you briefly introduce yourselves and your roles? Sure. Um, my name is Glenn Hoffman, and I run the, uh, the data science function at New York Life. I've been at New York Life about five years and uh, was, was brought in to, to build up uh, uh, the data science function, uh, sort of a corporate data science function at, uh, at the company. And Siva? Uh, thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Glenn. Uh, I'm Siva Balu. I'm the Chief Information Officer at YMCA of the USA, which is the national office of all the YMCAs. Uh, my responsibility includes uh, digital products, data, infrastructure, and security. Uh, I'm fairly new to this role. I uh, have been here for eight months. Prior to this, I spent 20 years uh, in healthcare at Blue Cross Blue Shield in a similar capacity. Excellent. Thank you both. Um, we'll start with Glenn. Um, you represent a C-level executive with a history of building and leading data science and, and analytics teams. Um, can you describe your approach for building the team at New York Life? There are several uh, important components to building a, an effective data science or analytics team at a large company. I think uh, the, the first one is uh, you know, business partnerships and, uh, and truly uh, building relationships, building partnerships, managing stakeholders uh, from the various business areas that we support. Uh, so we have very, we have created very strong relationships with uh, a number of different areas in the company, such as underwriting, um, our agency sales organization, marketing, finance, product, and, and, and a few others. It's important to uh, interact with these groups at multiple levels. So we have sort of a multi-level communication strategy. You know, I uh, talk frequently to the leaders of those groups, but then my managers will talk to, to their counterparts. Uh, and then even the individual contributors, you know, are charged with maintaining relationships at their level with the, uh, um, uh, the data people, the, uh, the business people in those organizations. So that's sort of the, uh, the business partnerships. Then there, is, then there is infrastructure, probably the second component. Uh, and we'll talk about that more when we get to, to the tech partnership parts of this, um, of this chat. Uh, so both on the, on the data side, as well as on the uh, deployment side, uh, infrastructure is important. Uh, third is perhaps the team. So you know, building a team of, uh, of data scientists, but but not just data scientists. So I found that uh, to have a, a, a successful team of data scientists actually takes a lot of support for them. So I, I have about four four teams of technical data scientists, but then I I support them with uh, a number of other folks. So we have a, a a team of project managers that supports the data science managers. We have um, a change manager, we have some data engineers, we have some machine learning of, of engineers, and we also have a development team that manages a lot of external partnerships. And, uh, and we have a team of people that manages you know, contracts and, and, and other things like that. So I find that uh, if one has a pure data scientist team, then uh, you know, uh, data scientists tend to be more introverted and not, you know, not uh, naturally go out and talk to everybody. Uh, so they need some help from, you know, project managers and other folks to uh, to be operating effectively. So, uh, so I find that to be useful. But but still having the data science managers talk directly to the business folks, I think uh, is is the, at least the way I manage my team. I don't have any any you know MBA level intermediaries, uh, but I do have a lot of support for my data scientists. Uh, so that's key. And, and and the fourth thing is maybe maybe sort of internal branding. Uh, and, uh, and that means making the, the data science team known and the capabilities known inside of the company. And um, 
And we do that uh, in a number of different ways. So we have a, we run a data science community with lots of different events and, and such. We run something called a data science academy that basically offers data science classes to anybody in the company who has an interest in data science. And, uh, and then we, we have you know, various activities uh, and, and interactions to make sure that data science has a good brand inside of the company. Excellent. That's, that's very thorough. I appreciate that. So obviously the data science team rolls up to you, Chief Analytics Officer, your peer to the CIO. Um, can you kind of talk through the relationship between data science and IT and you know, where the handoff and responsibility is for getting the models built, getting them into production, and then you know, governing those once they're deployed? Sure. Yeah. There, there, there are actually, I'd say, two key interaction points with the technology organization. Uh, so one is on the data side, you know, before, uh, before analytics development happens. So feeding data into analytics development is, is a key point. So, so that means all the internal data infrastructure, as well as bringing in external data and how that flows into analytics development. So that's a key interaction point. And we have a lot of uh, uh, collaboration with the, uh, the data organizations that sits in the technology uh, uh, org, as well as, you know, I have, I have a couple of data engineers on my team that, that I would describe as sort of doing the last mile, you know, data processing to get, to get in the models. So, so there's a lot of interaction there. You know, it's, I, I think it's important that, that, you know, my group is a, is a user of data and as such that we, you know, we, we sort of drive some of the agenda of the data priorities that happen in the tech organization. Of course, there's other users of data. My group is not the only one. So that's sort of on the, on the, on the getting data into analytics development. Then on the back end, there was the deployment piece that you talked about. Um, so, so uh, I mean, we've adapted the, 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 the Domino platform uh, for, for deployment, well, for other things too, but especially for deployment of models. So, so we now, you know, put all of our models into that platform and then we on API deploy that to many production platforms in the company. <clears throat> so building up that platform and, and running and maintaining it and deploying models on it is very much a collaboration between my team and the tech organization. And I think it's important for that to have, to have tech folks that, that specialize on that to some degree that, uh, that have, um, a continuous interaction with analytics people because uh, analytics people are probably not like any other tech customer and sort of have, you know, teams of people that tune into each other and, and, uh, and make that happen on a continuous basis, I think is pretty important. Great, thank you. Uh, Siva, let's go to you. Uh, you're the CIO of YMCA. Um, in your role, what's your relationship with the data science, with your data science team? Sure, uh, I'll speak from both my experience at YMCA as well as Lucra. Absolutely. Uh, which would be a good plan. Uh, data science was re is really a role within a larger team. Previously, the data team reported to me, the larger team, uh, different roles, anywhere from a data architecture, data engineering and development, uh, data operations, and we had a data business operations, as well as data scientists. Uh, the way we operated is uh, in a bimodal fashion. Uh, mode one is whenever there is a new product or a new program, we had a smaller group of data scientists work together with the cross-functional team so they can move faster, create prototypes and deliver. More two is a larger team that uh, manage platforms, data warehouses, data marts, and deliver to the business. So it's really a little bit of a different way we approach it based upon what the business need is. Uh, talking to different uh, peers of mine in the industry, it looks like every company is different. And uh, typically what I see in both my roles is Data is usually between two teams. Uh, one is uh, the engineering and the technology side, and the other is the user side, which is also sometimes analytics. So that's kind of where uh, I have seen uh, teams roll up to. And depending on the changes, uh, sometimes based upon reorgs and whatnot, this uh, combination goes back and forth like a pendulum. But uh, it starts small, and then as the program matures in your data science group, uh, it actually dissipates into different areas depending on your business need. So, um, you know, you've been in a number of organizations with it. You, know, you talked about 
roles changing and, and you know, reorgs and such. What do you see of the pros and cons of a reporting structure? Um, the reporting structure is, uh, I want to underplay that uh, because it's really uh, the company is one team, right? The reporting structure is just a management structure. Uh, what, what I mean by that is no matter who you report to, whether the chief analytics officer, chief information officer, or chief data officer, and there are many other roles these days, uh, you had to work in a matrix uh, culture. Uh, you're dependent on infrastructure, you're dependent on users, and a data team is also not a silo. They have to get inputs from external parties. Like we had a lot of trading partners at Blue Cross Blue Shield that we had to work with. Uh, so really it's a matrix culture mindset is what we try to promote, no matter where they reported to. Uh, from time to time, the team was successful when it had reported to like a SVP of data or a chief data officer so that they can move faster, decisions are made quicker. Sometimes that also slowed down because uh, there can be uh, potentially some walls between areas. So we don't want those silos. Uh, so there is really, uh, in, in my experience, uh, absolute positive working in a matrix uh, culture, no matter who you report to. Fantastic. And, and Glenn, it feels like you, you've talked about the brand and, uh, and, and you know, could you kind of expound on that as well? For sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, lastly, I agree with, um, I, I agree with uh, um, uh, Balu on on uh, the you know the, the reporting structure is is uh, is ultimately not that important, but it but it has sort of some some short term uh, you know impact. So um, I mean I've I've reported to many different you know kinds of people, and and you have to sort of adjust a little bit. So if you know if um, if analytics or data science reports into a CIO, which which is not what I currently have, but but I've had that in the past. Then you know you sit in the same staff meeting. You have the same. You have more interaction. So, so the tech uh, the tech builds tend to get done a little faster, right? So it's a little easier to say, okay, uh, I need this data built, or I need this infrastructure built, or I need these libraries, you know, next week, and and uh, and uh, and that gets done a little faster, <clears throat> and that relationship becomes a little more automatic. Uh, but then you know the business relationship gets a little harder, and one has to work. You know, extra hard to to maintain the uh, the business stakeholder interactions and and uh, and keep that going, which which ultimately is what creates the value of of data science. <clears throat> Whereas you know, currently I report to one of the one of the highest level business leaders at New York Life, so so that makes the business interaction a little bit easier. He helps me facilitate some of the higher level conversations with the various business units, and uh, I still have to work hard on that, but maybe a little less hard. Uh, Whereas now I have to work a little harder with the tech relationships and and uh, and make sure that that things go well there. So I, either way, relationship management in both parts is important, but uh, reporting relationships helps with, with one or the other. It's interesting because um, from my own experience, about five years ago, uh, mobile security company we were launching our data science uh, team, right? First team, and of course I'm a security guy, and they they asked me, um, you know. Uh, unblock them. They're hitting the IT, the architecture, all these kind of issues. And so, sure, we did. We absolutely got them access to the data. We did it securely, cost efficient, efficiently. Their first results came out, and um, the business was very excited. And they said, "How do we get this into the product?" Everyone kind of looked at each other, and we're like, "We didn't talk to the product. Product had the roadmap locked for a number of quarters." And so we were, we were kind of like, "Whoops!" You know, it, it feels like every org kind of has that learning moment. Um, I'll start with Glenn. Do you kind of have a, a project that where you kind of learned that you had to break down these boundaries and really work together? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That 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 that, that happens often. I mean, certainly as we started to uh, deploy the platform in technology, there were definitely some moments of of like, okay, uh, we actually still have to do extensive Q and A, uh, and. We probably hadn't. I mean, we had planned some time for that, but you know, it, uh, it tends to take longer than you think. So, uh, so that that was certainly a moment. <clears throat> and then on the business side, you know, there was there was there was governance, and and uh, New York Life has extensive governance. And for for some of the larger projects, there, there are probably six or seven different governance organizations that we have to uh, that we have to talk to, and and. Uh, and it's important to put that in the project plan and remind people that we have to talk to them a few months earlier before we need a decision. So that uh, I think the first 
project or two that we did, we will probably a little bit late on, on those. And see, do you have an example of, of, of your learnings, I guess? Absolutely. Similar to yours, John, uh, I have a, a good example where the data scientists uh, who are a couple of PhDs, they're given uh, all kinds of admin access and high compute uh, PCs to work on when they were working on a new strategic priority. So there's a lot of limelight on that. But when the prototype was done, when it's approved by the board, now we have to move it to a UAT environment and then we got to ultimately move to production in the product. There was a huge challenge because they actually used R and Python to write it just to show the prototype. But in our uh, data environment, that will not scale up. We had an entirely different architecture with solar, other indexed and faceted search to get to production. So we had actually redo the entire prototype in a new platform, in a new language. And uh, also we used it as an opportunity to kind of work with them in a nice way to teach them. Like there are uh, certain standards that we want to adhere to when you're doing prototype next time. So we don't need to redo the things from scratch. So that was a, a big learning moment for us. Fantastic. And, and you, you, you dovetail nicely into our next topic, which is technology. Um, and we kind of want to talk a little bit about technology processes and best practices. You mentioned data scientists use a variety of tools and languages. Um, how are you making it easier to, for them to bounce ideas off each other and repurpose past work? Um, like, and also, do, like, do you have a uh, place for knowledge management? Yeah. Uh, how are we making it easier? Uh, there is always going to be a natural friction between different areas. And in large companies, you just need to have that acceptance. That's why there's a lot of emphasis put on culture than the technology. So it's easier to work with. As an example, traditionally, we were an IBM shop. So we used Watson early on in our data science, but then we moved on to other platforms and newer technologies for other reasons. Uh, but we had to make sure that the entire uh, suite of teams come with us in the journey. Uh, so we had actually uh, have several forums. We have internal collaboration portal, as well as since uh, these are federated models, you know, these are larger brands with many offices. We have uh, customer collaboration. Before COVID, we had collaboration conferences that we will have twice a year where folks flew into uh, you know, Orlando or Chicago to have those all week long uh, exchange sessions where we talk about really the business problem, how we solve the business problems, what are the learnings, and then every other state shares their learnings. And it was a great experience. Uh, now we are doing it virtually, but that, those are some of the forums we used to continuously uh, keep our data scientists engaged as well as exchange ideas and learnings from others. Excellent, Glenn, yeah. do you wanna chime in? Definitely, yeah, yeah. I, I, those probably three points I wanna make there one is we have now switched to the uh, uh, you know to the way of, of being able to use uh, Python and R code and promote that directly to production <clears throat> you know via the via the, the, the dominant platform so I, I think that's been a, a big change for us a big positive change because in the past we used to have to translate you know the models from from Python or R into you know, into C or Java, and that that requires a lot of QA uh, to to get that right. So now that we can deploy directly in Python and R, that's been a, a, a you know accelerated our deployment a lot. Now, now this is also not trivial because the the Python code you use to build a model and the Python code that you need to deploy in production are not exactly the same thing. So there need to be a lot of coding robustness that needs to be built in. Uh, so that it can handle anything that production can, can throw its way. So that has been uh, a shift, and we've been training both our data scientists and our ML engineers to, to, to kind of make, make that shift. But, uh, but overall, that's a very positive thing. The second sort of, uh, you know, once a data science team grows to a certain scale, so my team is about 50 people now, and, and you know, so the difference between 10 people and 50 people means that not everybody knows what everybody else is doing anymore. Uh, so you do have to you know, it, it institutionalize, uh, you know, some sort of uh, uh, knowledge sharing that, that was, you know, happening naturally before. And, and, and now, you know, that everybody's remote, working remotely, that's not helping either. So, um, so uh, we have done that. We, we, we have sort of a lot of different community events that we've put in place. We have weekly seminars. We have larger community events where people present the work. And that we also have smaller sort of technical working sessions with multiple teams where people can learn from each other. 
uh, both on, on a coding basis as well as on a methodology basis. So that's been, that's been quite helpful. Um, and then for the future, I'm even more optimistic because I think uh, what we want to do sort of over the next year or two is institutionalize the feature creation and the feature knowledge for model development. So, so I'm looking forward to the time when we will have a feature store that's, that's functioning. Now, uh, first we have to build, uh, uh, or we have to further enhance our automated data streams before we can do that. But, uh, but I, I'm seeing, you know, sort of generic products coming out on the market around feature stores, which currently only exist in a few big companies. Uh, so then we can institutionalize the knowledge and document the knowledge better around what are the, the best features to use in certain types of models. So that will be a, a, a bright new future. Fantastic. Well, with that, we're about out of time. I really want to appreciate everyone for joining us. Um, I'd like to thank our two guests, Glenn Hoffman, Chief Analytics Officer at New York Life, and Siva Balu, VP and CIO at YMCA, for joining me today. Thank you both, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having you. Me.